Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Focus along with image sharpness, which really go hand in hand, are two topics that garner quite a bit of attention. Now, as it relates to focus, the, the two aspects I hear most about have to do with one, where best to place your focus point in your scene, and two, which focus point type and size is best for a particular genre of photography. Now, as far as this video is concerned though, I'm going to tackle the latter topic with regards to digging into the best focus point size and type, but I do want to touch upon where to focus real quick, as this came up quite a bit in the comments section of my F11 video from a couple weeks ago. Now, if your ultimate goal is to try and get your entire scene in focus from front to back, placing your focus point a third of the way into your scene is generally a great place to start. But of course, this is all very dependent on the aperture you choose and having a hyperfocal distance calculator handy will, will certainly be the most accurate route to go. Now, as far as where to place it, the common question I get is, do you focus a third of the way into the scene that you see with your eyes or is it a third of the way into the scene that you see on the back of your camera, which is a great, uh, which is a great question because they're two completely different things, what you see with your eyes and what is actually on the back of your LCD. This is a great example of it. I always try and, at least I should say I start by focusing a third of the way in the scene. And I think that if you're in a vertical orientation here, using the, the rule of third grids is a great way to see where a roughly a third of the way into the scene is. But it is ultimately a third of the way into the scene on the back of your LCD and not necessarily what you perceive with your, or not how you see the scene with your eyes. So as you can see, I'm focused just about, just a little bit beyond one third of the way into the scene. If you're in a horizontal or a landscape orientation, you can see that my focus point is placed right here exactly on a third of the way into the scene. As long as you're using a higher aperture level, you should be okay. But the most important aspect of all of this is that when you focus a third of the way into your scene and you capture that photograph, to review that image on the back of your camera and make sure your foreground is sharp and then go all the way into the background and see if the background is as sharp as you like. I generally like to have a little bit of natural fall off in the background because I think that one, that's how we see the the, the world anyway. We don't see a, a focus stacked world where everything is sharp from the, the foreground to the background. I think having a nice, subtle, soft fall off of focus into the, the distant background is sometimes nice, adds a lot of uh, natural depth to a photograph. So in this particular scene, there was really no foreground or background. I was just able to just kind of focus probably anywhere on this mountain range and be able to get that in sharp focus. Now, as far as you, you really can't talk about focus points without talking about focus modes first. In the three main focus modes generally, you know, every camera is a little bit different. Every camera man manufacturer names things different and, and, and uh, sets things up a little bit differently. But generally speaking, there's three main focus modes to a camera. One, you have single autofocus, which basically means that however you enable focus on your camera, whether it's half pressing the shutter button or perhaps it's back button focus, however you engage your autofocus system, if you're in single focus mode, all it's gonna do is as soon as you press that button down, your camera's gonna focus one time and it's going to stop focusing until you engage your autofocus system again. So that's single focus mode. If you have continuous autofocus enabled on your camera, as soon as you half press your shutter or back button focus, however you're engaging your uh, autofocus system, your camera is going to continue to hunt for focus the entire time that you have the autofocus system engaged. So it is always searching for some kind of, you know, better option for focusing whenever you're using continuous autofocus. And then the third is manual. I was gonna say manual autofocus, but it's just manual focus, which is basically no autofocus on your camera whatsoever. It is all completely up to you. Now, as far as the different auto or the uh, the focus point sizes and types, this is a very very common question that I hear: is is which is best for outdoor landscape photography or, or any genre of photography? So the first one is single autofocus. So in this mode, once you enable this, you can go straight up to single point. Usually, you can pick the focus area. And what's nice about this setup is that all of these right here, these are all individual focus points that my camera can use. And when you are using single or multi-point autofocus, you have the ability to determine whether or not you want to utilize one or a group of them. And you can move it wherever you would like. So in this scenario, I'm making my focus area a little bit larger. I can make it a little bit smaller where I'm only utilizing nine of those focus points. But you can ultimately move it wherever you want and place it on anything. So you can put it on the background, focus, and you can see the background's in focus. I can bring it to the object in the foreground, focus there, take it back to the background, 
and it has it gives you the really the the ultimate amount of control for your particular scene and this is really good you know one of the biggest benefits of this honestly is that it's, it's very accurate and it's very fast if you think about it you're basically telling your camera camera i only want you to utilize this one focus point or maybe these nine focus points it's a very confined area so your camera doesn't have to utilize the entire scene to focus it can just focus on one particular area that you indicate so it's very quick and it's very accurate because you determine exactly the or just say you determine the exact point that you want your camera to focus on so those are two of the real big benefits is that it's very fast and it is uh, very quick and it's very very accurate not so great for moving subjects so so now the next one is something that is called zone autofocus so hopefully let me go back here to this one right here and let me hit play so whenever you enable zone which is really good for tracking subjects within a particular area you still have the ability to change the overall size but you can't take it to one focus point or two focus points it's a much larger area and then you move that focus point to that area and you can see that you don't have control over exactly what areas in that zone that your camera utilizes you can see that it picked these four focus point cells to use for this particular scene let me play it on forward again here move it up here and you focus again you can see that the camera selected these two right here so you don't have the ultimate amount of control it's just basically you're going to pick the size of the overall zone and then you move the zone to an area that you want your camera to target so once again we'll focus right here and you can see that it picked those three in the center focus up there you can see which focus points it picked in that scenario and so on and so forth now this is a great solution for when you uh, when you know that there's going to be something moving in a particular area of your scene it's, it's it's good for tracking things when you know exactly where that movement is going to occur if you know that the movement is going to occur in the you know upper left hand area of your photograph you can make a, a uh, focus zone and move it to that area of your scene and your camera can and, uh, continually focus in that particular area as long as you have continuous autofocus enabled in that particular setup now hold, real quick i do want to mention this one as well because it is very very popular and it's eye autofocus and it's pretty simple to do and i don't have anyone that ever helps me let me pause this real quick i don't have anyone that helps me with any of these videos i am completely a one-man show and i don't have uh, i didn't have another subject to do this with so i basically had to record the back of my camera which was recording my monitor which was showing a past youtube video in order to get a trackable eye so that's why this uh scene might might seem a little bit odd but when you enable eye autofocus which you can see that i'm doing right now you have the ability to do left eye right eye eye auto which this which your camera will basically just determine exactly which eye is the best to focus on and as you can see it is looking like it is locked onto my left eye in this scenario and it is staying with it almost the entire time sometimes it bounces to the right eye but i think you you get the point eye autofocus is uh is very very straightforward but it's definitely one of the most popular autofocusing uh I should say options available today is eye autofocus and as you can tell it works very very well now the the next one is something that's called a wide tracking and wide tracking is fantastic for when you have a very erratic subject it doesn't give you the the ultimate amount of control but when you have a subject that's moving left and right across your frame forward and backward and you have no idea exactly where this subject is going to move this is a great option for you let me just go ahead and hit play whenever you enable this uh, you can go over to uh, to wide tracking and but you can't pick exactly where it's because it's going to target the entire camera or i should say the entire uh, uh focusing system it's, it's utilizing every potential area so you don't have the ultimate control as to where you are going to be able to focus it's just going to be focusing everywhere throughout your overall photograph which can be good in particular scenes but it doesn't always give you the the best i should say option for when you're photographing a static scenes but it, it's fantastic for things like you know like birds in flight are absolutely fantastic you can see that the autofocus point is hanging on every single movement of this bird which is pretty incredible honestly but wide tracking is just absolutely fantastic for these types of uh, types of scenarios but the, the ultimate question is you know what is best for for landscape photography and it really depends on exactly you know how you like to operate what i use though is the single point autofocus i think that that is you know the speed aspect of it yes it's going to be the more than likely the quickest autofocus solution for you i don't really care about the speed you know landscape photography one of the things i love most about it it is a slower type of photography which is very uh, enjoyable for me 
So the speed of it really isn't that uh, important. But what is important to me is that I have the ultimate control to pick a very, very small area, a single focus point and place that focus point anywhere in my scene and can fo focus exactly on that point one time. I don't have to worry about my camera hunting in different areas. I don't have to, to worry about placing a focus area on an area that I want to focus on and then the camera picking a certain portion of that area that I do not necessarily want it to focus on. I like to have the ultimate control by using single point of focus. And the biggest benefit of this, in my opinion, is that you can use one focus area, you can use six focus areas, nine, 10. It's completely up to you because you determine the overall size. So I think that using the, the single point of focus when you are using, or when you're photographing a static subject like trees, mountains, rivers, although I guess rivers are moving, but you, you get what I'm saying. You're not photographing sports, you're not photographing wildlife or anything like that. When you're, foc when you're photographing a static subject like landscapes, I always use a single or multi-point autofocus system in single focus mode, not continuous, because I don't want my camera continually hunting for focus the entire time. I want to dictate exactly where my camera focuses, and I want to focus exact. I want to be able to have control over when my camera focuses and how often it focuses. So that is the approach that I take. Whether or not it is the the ultimate answer is to is left to um, in the eye of the beholder, I suppose, or whoever is actually doing it at that time. So I do hope that that information is helpful or was helpful. And before I do wrap up this week's video, I just want to say a huge thanks to the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a robust and beautiful online platform to develop your website. You can showcase your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and display your work using customizable galleries in order to make it your own. And with Squarespace's online store feature, you'll have access to all the tools you'll need to start selling your physical, digital, or service products online immediately. You can even use Squarespace's new asset library so you can upload, organize, and access all your content from a single place in order to easily find and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So if you have any questions about uh, focus modes or the focus mode that I use, please leave those in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as humanly possible. And as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And if you did enjoy this week's video, I almost forgot, if you could, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.